بلونط شي طونز على شي لي كونسيست في الاول من بيج بيرسونال داتا ميديكال هيستوري دنتال هيستوري بريزنت ايلنس فاميلي هيستوري الحاجات اللي هي عندنا عليها قبل كده اهم يعني نبتدي اهم جزء بقى في البلونط examination record in both the intramural which will begin by the findings and the gingival criteria اول item for gingival criteria هنتكلم عليه هو the color بتاع the gingival the normal color of the gingival is pink pink so we see on a patient the normal criteria دي ماشي ازاي وبعد كده هنشوف على abnormal patient نتكلم عن الكالر. First the color on the normal the pink pink. تمام. Any item described in the gingiva, we have to describe whether it is localized or generalized, which means if it is confined in a part of the gingiva, in the oral cavity, for example, the anterior region, the anterior region, or generalized for all the gingiva of the oral cavity. This is number one, whether it is localized or generalized. Number two is whether it is related to a free gingiva, or a, sorry, a marginal gingiva, or a papilla, interdental papilla, or it is a diffuse change, which includes the margin, the papilla, and the attached gingiva. So, let's see the normal color on the patient. This is typically a normal color, a normal color of the gingiva. Okay, this is the pale pink color. طبعا ممكن نلاحظ هنا في شوية brownish discoloration, which could be described as physiologic pigmentation according to the complexion of the patient. Okay, it's normal all over. Not all over. We have a change here. Okay, we saw the normal. What is the abnormal? The abnormal, we can have a red color, as we saw on this patient, which will be known later is due to inflammation. Okay? This red color is demonstrated here. Relax. Okay? This is a red color of the ginger. So we have a change. So I have to describe whether this change is mar marginal, papillary, or diffuse, and whether it is localized or generalized. This change here is located, uh, confined, the marginal gingiva. So it is a marginal redness, okay? We don't have a change in color in the rest of the oral cavity. And therefore, it is a localized marginal redness. And this is how I describe the color change in the patient, okay? Here on this patient, it is a localized marginal redness. Okay. The next item is the contour. First, I have to know the normal. What is the normal contour of the gingiva? It is knife edge marginal gingiva and uh, pointed interdental papilla, okay? And the spooning of the gingiva is preserved or is present. This is the normal. So let's see the model. We see the margins here are knife edge, the papillae are pointed. Knife edge margins, papillae are pointed as a tip of the triangle. So what is the abnormal? It is the opposite of that, which means blunt interdental papilla or rounded tip of the interdental papillae and rolled gingival margin. We have an abnormal area, so I expect we find these changes in the abnormal area. Here, yes, it is present. We have a rolled gingival margin here and blunt interdental papillae. Compared to the upper, the change is apparent. Next item is the texture. The texture means the surface of the gingiva. How does it look like? The normal surface, the feet, 
stippling. Okay? It's not smooth. It has stippling or an orange peel appearance. This orange peel appearance is normal and due to the presence histologically the presence of red pegs in the structure of the gingiva, in the histological structure. So let's see, how do I see this stippling first? I have to dry the gingiva with a cotton or a gauze. And then examine to see the stippling. You see this orange peel appearance? This is not a smooth area. Where do I look for the stippling? We have stippling for two sides, or two parts of the gingiva. The attached gingiva and the center or the core of the interdental papilla. Okay? The marginal gingiva has no, or the free gingiva has no stippling, as we see. Here, in the attached gingiva, and the center of the interdental papillae. You see this free gingiva is totally smooth. This is the normal. So what is the abnormal? The abnormal, the normal is the presence of stippling, so the abnormal would be the absence of stippling. I expect in this patient we have an abnormal area in the lower anterior region, so I expect we will not find stippling in it. We do not have stippling here in the center of this papilla. Okay. Next item is the size of the gingiva. The normal size of the gingiva we talk about in a vertical component. The normal size would be the margin, the margin of the gingiva will be one millimeter coronal to the cemento enamel junction, and the interdental papillae will be confined to the interdental triangle. The abnormal, I will find the marginal gingiva covering more than that, or more than the coronal third of the crown, of the cervical third of the crown, and or the interdental papillae is out of the confines of the interdental triangle and covering part of the crown of the tooth. Here on this patient, we do not have any increase in size. We describe it as an increase in size in the gingiva. We do not have any increase in size. We see the margins of the gingiva are normally in place, and the interdental papillae are confined to the interdental triangle, even here. Next item is the consistency. What is the normal consistency of the gingiva? First, where do I test the consistency of the gingiva? We have two sides only. I test the consistency in the interventional papillae and in the free marginal gingiva. I do not test the consistency in the attached gingiva because it is attached to the underlying bone. So any, I will not see any change in its consistency. How do I test the consistency? First, I have to use a blunt part of an instrument. Not a sharp part in order not to injure the gingiva. So I'll use the back of a periodontal probe. I would pass on the interdental papillae, like that, applying gentle pressure and on the free gingiva. The normal consistency of the gingiva is to be firm and resilient, which means when I press by a back of the periodontal probe, it will pit and then return back to normal immediately. This is firm and resilient due to its fibrous content. So how about the abnormal? The abnormal is the opposite. It is when I pit, or when I press gently, it would pit, but it would not return immediately, like here. The relation of all these changes to inflammation, I will explain later after a 
finish the criteria. This is the abnormal consistency. Next item is recession. When do I say there is recession for a certain tooth? I have to see clinically the cementum. I have to see the root. So I, I say that there is recession. Let's see here. I can't see any roots here. Can't see any roots. So there is no recession. And in the recession item, I have to, if it is present, I have to say whether which tooth is uh, 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 that has the recession. Second, I have to say whether this recession is buccally or lingually. I might have a tooth that has recession uh, lingually and nothing buccal. Third, I have to say the type of this recession or the grade of this recession according to Miller's classification. So, <clears throat> next is exudates. For example, exudates that may be present in the oral cavity related to the teeth is pus, which we know is related to an abscess. So how do I test for exudates that may come out of the gingival crevice? I can use in the back of the periodontal probe or my finger to make apply a gentle pressure on the attached gingiva and up, up towards the margin of the gingiva. So any pus that can be drained through the gingival sulcus will come out. Of course, a periapical abscess will not drain pus by this way, except in very rare cases when a very endo connection occurs, but this is significant because I have some diseases like diabetes mellitus is characterized by multiple periodontal abscesses. Okay, by this method I can ex uh, examine the presence of a periodontal abscess that can drain through the gingival sacs. Next is frication involvement. Frication involvement I can examine by two methods: clinically on the patient and radiographically on X. Here we'll see clinically, but I can only examine the vocation involvement clinically using the